Hello everyone and welcome to the DP.DesignProfessionals YouTube channel. Today we will be talking about what order to take the ARE exams. Let's hop right into it. So as you may know, there are six exams as part of NCARB's ARE exams. They are Practice Management, Project Management, Programming and Analysis, project planning and design, project development and documentation, and construction and evaluation. This is just the order that NCARB lays them out, um, but that is not necessarily the order in which you should or need to take the exams. You can take the exams in any order you choose. Um, NCARB makes it very easy and flexible to schedule the exams, and so you can choose which order to um, take them in. And I'll tell you a little bit about how they're laid out and then what order I did them and then what I recommend. So NCARB lists the exams in a particular order and that's just based on how they fall or what kind of information they cover based on the different phases of design and construction. So I laid out here the different exams and the different um, kind of areas they cover based on the different design uh, phases. So practice and project management cover basically all phases of design. Um, they're more big picture about obviously how to manage a practice or how to manage a project. So they cover really everything from be beginning to end. Um, programming and analysis, obviously that includes some programming and a little bit of SD. PPD, which is project planning and design, is uh, more of the DD phase. Uh, PDD is the project development and documentation exam, and that covers both the CD phase and a little bit of bidding, and then construction and evaluation. Obviously, that is the construction phase, so a bit of bidding and the CA phase. So that's kind of how NCARB lays out the exams in terms of the topic areas it covers. And then based on those topic areas, I recommend um, kind of grouping those exams in two groups. Before I get into the specifics of what order to take them in, I'll just show you my exam timeline and what order I took them in. Um, so you'll read my exam timeline from bottom to top, and that's the order I took it in. Um, from my first past exam to my last past exam, it took a little bit over a year to get through all of them. This is just showing you like the advice I'm giving is based on uh, my personal experiences. So there's a lot of other people out there who might recommend a different order or different groupings, but this is just what I did. And I think that this strategy worked really well for me. The exam order that I recommend is right here on the screen, um, and this is the order that I took the exams in. So starting off with practice management, then project management, construction and evaluation, programming and analysis, project planning and design, and then project development and documentation. I'll go a little bit more in depth about the different exams, but I would say that this is a really solid order to take the exams in just based on one, the content they cover, and then two, um, I personally left the hardest ones for the very end, and for me that was project planning and design and project development and documentation. So the first kind of four exams were easier to get through and easier to pass. So you kind of get a feel for the exams and what they're about, how the questions or how the exam is structured and how the questions are structured. Um, so you can kind of get, get your toes wet and get a feel for it. And then by the time you get to those more difficult exams at the end, you're kind of ready, you're practiced and you're ready to tackle those exams. In order to understand why I recommend the exams be taken in this order, we need to look at the NCARB ARE 5.0 handbook. What you want to look at in the handbook is the um, reference matrix, which is at the very end of the ARE handbook. 
Um, and this particular page is the contracts section. So this reference matrix just shows you all of the AIA contracts that you need to know over the course of all six exams, and then which exams cover which contracts. So if we take a look here at the first two columns, practice management and project management, um, I recommend taking practice management first. And kind of one of the reasons I recommend that is because it only covers two of the AIA contracts. Um, so that's a good way to get started, get your uh, a feel for what the AIA contracts are, how they're formatted and what they're about. And then after you've um, kind of studied for, taken or passed this exam, you can move on to the next one, which would be project management. And that's just learning a few more contracts. It looks like a lot more, but if you go listen to my other videos, uh, you'll understand that a lot of these contracts are really similar and it's actually not that much more content. So then once you've kind of taken these two exams, then you can move on to the CE exam, which covers just a few more contracts. Um, so by taking it in this order, you start with a few and then you keep adding on more AIA contracts and it really just builds up on each other. So just looking at AIA contracts, these three exams are a good three to group together. Um, you don't necessarily have to take it in that order, but I recommend uh, doing practice and project and CE just so your AIA contract knowledge slowly builds up rather than trying to learn everything at the beginning and then um, kind of scoping down. It's, it's really easy if you build up slowly. So the next part we wanna look at also in the NCARB ARE 5.0 handbook is the reference matrix. And this is more focused on the reference books. This is also at the end of the handbook. Um, and I know these images are super small, but if you wanna look at more in depth, again, go look at the NCARB ARE 5.0 handbook. I'll place the link down below. But this is just more big picture to get an idea of the different topics that the exams cover and kind of where that information overlaps. So again, we'll start off by looking at the practice management and project management exams, and that's in the first two columns of each of these pages. So if you see here, these two exams have some overlap here. Uh, they also have some overlap here. Um, and then if we also look at the CE exam, um, practice project and CE overlap here. And they also overlap a little bit right here. So in terms of this reference matrix, practice management, project management, and construction and evaluation cover similar topics. Um, then if we focus on the other three exams, which is PA, PPD, and PDD, um, it's pretty obvious that those three exams here in the middle have quite a bit of overlap in terms of the reference materials that the exams uh, reference um, and therefore the topic areas that they cover overlap quite a bit. So just based on looking at the AIA contracts and references, we've kind of grouped the six exams into two groupings, three exams each. So our two groupings are group A and group B. I recommend practice, project, and CE being in one group just based off of the exam content or topics that the exams cover, and then group B, which is programming and analysis, PPD, and PDD. Um, and I've outlined these two groupings here in this chart, also showing um, what kind of topic areas those exams cover based on the different design phases. So one thing I would also like to note here is that you don't have to take the exams in this order that's listed. Let's say that you're studying for practice management and you fail that exam and you don't know if you should continue on um, to take project management next or if you should wait your 60 days to take practice management again. I would um, say that you could, either either option is really fine. Um, it really just depends on your timeline and your goals and what you're trying to achieve. Uh, for me personally, uh, my goal was to just always keep the momentum going so I didn't lose out on any momentum 
uh, or time. So if let's say, for example, you fail the practice management exam and you want to just keep going and not waste any more time in the next month, you could study for the project management exam and easily pass that exam just because those two exams have a lot of overlap. Um, so then let's say you pass the project management exam, you could either go on to take construction and evaluation or go back and take practice management, just depending on um, your timeline and what you have available. In terms of the groupings of exams, it's also good to like group the exams together in case you need to like make up time for failed exams and like waiting out that clock. For me personally, I would say, let's say I failed the project management exam and the construction and evaluation exam. I would not move on to this uh, group B of exams until I got this first group over with. That's just me, my personal opinion. Obviously, you can do whatever feels best for you. Um, but just because each grouping of exams does have a lot of content overlap, uh, for me, keeping the information fresh and like ready was very, very helpful and to take those exams close together. If you notice on my timeline for both practice project and CE exams, I took those each about a month apart. And that was really helpful because the information from all of the exams kind of stayed fresh in my mind. I was refreshing along the way and all of that information really helped me through the rest of the exams. And it helped me cut down on study time so I didn't have to continuously relearn all of that information. Similar strategy for PA, PPD, and PDD, those exams have a lot of overlap. So if you fail one, you can move on to the next, but just like try to stay in these two like groupings of exams, just so your brain is not trying to retain so much information that's unrelated. But if you keep in these groupings, a lot of that information will translate to the other exams and it'll help you pass potentially those other exams. So that's kind of my strategy, staying within the groups, don't necessarily have to take it in that order, but keeping that information close in time together and because it really will help you through the exam and keeping the information relevant. That's about it for today, but we will not end until we announce the dog of the day. So today's dog of the day is Louisa. Here are some fun facts about her. She is a rescue from Paw Works. She loves car rides, loves to chase birds and squirrels, but doesn't know what to do on, to, with them when she like actually gets to them. She's very regal, but she's also quite derpy. And here is her Instagram name if you would like to go ahead and follow her. She is a cute and petite little ball of energy when she wants to, but she also is very cuddly. If you would like your dog or pet featured in the next dog of the day, please email me at dp.designprof at gmail.com. And thank you all for watching and tuning in. If you liked what you saw in this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Please feel free to comment if there are any questions you have for me or if there are any topic areas you would like to, me to cover in the future, drop them down in the comments below and I'll get back to you and make those videos as soon as possible. Thanks again.